ever had a date ne, with your skin and you just stay with the mirror ne? and then there's a pimple so then you just look and you look and you're just like you know what Tobeza, 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 and you squeeze, and then it's disgusting. It's disgusting. beautiful people welcome back to my channel i'm kapana shimange and this is how i do things the show where you send me your questions and i'll let you know how i would do things now you can take it as advice use it don't use it it is completely up to you i take no offense whatsoever do with it what you will now if there's one question that is super popular that keeps coming into the dms it keeps coming into the questions and into the comments it is about the skin the mug the shmani right here what do we do with this? So many questions. But there's something I'm seeing, right? There's a lot of talk about the skin. How do we take care of our skin? What do we do? Especially since there's, you know, self-care Sundays and Saturdays and the weekend, we take care of ourselves. But there's so many bad habits that we're learning with our skin. There are so many trends where it's just like we are scrubbing, we are rubbing, we are doing so many things to our skin that are bad, bad, bad. We're picking up on these habits that are literally damaging our skin. Our skin is worse off than it has to be because of the things that we are doing. We pick them up from people that we live with. We pick them up from our moms. We pick them up from influencers as well. You know, I'm not an expert here, but I'm talking about things that I have seen that I have changed in my skincare routine that have just completely revolutionized the way that this mug does. So in today's video, we're going to be touching on some of the things that you need to stop doing. You need to avoid doing these things to your face because they are ruining the beauty of the skin, the radiance, the glowishingness of your skin. This is not going to be one of those typical videos. Mm -mm -mm. It's not going to be one of those typical drink water and wash your face off makeup before you go to sleep. We know those things. If you're not doing them, you are doing it to yourself. You are ruining your own skin. We're going to get down deep into the things that we think are good, but they're actually really bad for our skin and things that we are making mistakes of that are causing the worst disasters on our skins. Literally, our skins are screaming and yelling and asking for help but we don't hear it and we don't know what to do with it and we don't know where we're going wrong. So in this video, I'll give you the top five biggest mistakes that I've picked up on that you really need to avoid making to have that good face situation going on. So if you have any questions that you want to send to me, head over to my Instagram and look for this picture right here. It is in my Insta story highlights. All you have to do is reply and let me know what question or scenario you want me to talk about in our next video. But for now, let's get into those top five big mistakes that we're making with our skin that we need to stop and avoid right now. Number one is facial hygiene. Now, we don't even like the word hygiene, but honestly, guys, Hopefully, it's dead. There's a there's a le there's levels to the situation when it comes to facial hygiene, right? It starts with your hands. Do you actually wash your hands before you touch your face? Do you know how much bacteria and dirt is on your face? And so many of us, we touch door handles, we touch our phone, we're touching so many things before we even get to the water. We switch on the tap, and then boom, the face, all the dirt that's on our hands with water onto our face. Do you ever take some time to just wash your hands before you wash your face? Your phone. There's people who go to the toilet with their phone. You're there, you're doing a number two, you're just scrolling on your phone, but you haven't wiped your phone since. Then you're touching door handles that other people have been touching as well. Your own hands. Maybe you could have touched the bottom of your shoe. You could have touched so many other things before you touched your bathroom door handle. And then you touch that thing and then you touch your face. Oh, oh, oh. The next level is actually the basin that you're washing your hands on, right? Have you, how often does that situation get washed or wiped? The handle of your tap and the basin. Then there's a facial cloth, right? Some people literally use the same cloth that they use for their body, for their face. Guys, that facial cloth washes, washes in between your butt, washes your feet, and now it must touch your face and you expect your face to not freak out and be angry at you. I'll be like, listen, I am your face, girl. My face 
and my feet don't need to know each other mm -mm. your feet are like the last thing that you wash or your butt crack and then your face is your first thing that you wash oh imagine <laughs> then there's the products that we are using right how often do you actually wipe the bottle so you have your facial wash in a bottle that you put in the cupboard that you leave on top of the cupboard it gathers dust it gathers dirt and your own hands right so from your own hands you don't wash your hands before you touch that thing and all this bacteria that is gathering up throughout the day that you're putting on your hands that you're putting on the bottle then you put water on your face and then you touch that very same bottle that you hardly wipe <laughs> last one from a facial hygiene point of view your pillowcase there was a point in my life where I used to get these little pimples on my face quite often and they used to just be on the sides here, right? I used to always have pimples on this area of my face. Then my sister told me to change my pillowcase a little bit more often. Game changer. Game changer. So if you're changing your pillowcase, it should be at least once a week. You should be changing your pillowcase once a week. And if you actually wash your face before you put your face on your pillowcase, you have less dirt on your pillowcase. Your face produces oil throughout the day then when you don't wash your face before you sleep all that oil rubs off on your pillowcase you may not see that but that dirt just transfers and it builds up every single day by the time it's friday it's just rubbing on your face oh guys shop let's move on number two is washing your face too much and too hard now for many people this is just like wait i thought that actually isn't a thing look the face is a living organism right the whole the skin everything living it is constantly producing new skin it is constantly shedding old skin it is constantly producing oil all of those things it's living it's growing it's producing all the time so now when we're washing our face too hard right we are scrubbing away especially if you like exfoliating and you like the beads you know inside the, the exfoliator and you're just scrubbing Woo! we're scrubbing the color of our face you go from one shade of brown and then you come out you are like three shades different because you've just been because you just want the dirt to come out and you think to yourself the harder i scrub the more dirt comes off but you're also scrubbing away active skin active skin that is actually working to make your face balance out your face lives on balance it has its own ph balance so when you are scrubbing you're scrubbing away skin that isn't ready to leave your face yet we should actually be working with our skin to make our skin work better so when we are scrubbing we're just there just rubbing off the goodness on our skin and it's just leaving us we're scrubbing off natural oils that our skin actually needs. Your skin produces oil quite often. It produces oil by itself. And when you're scrubbing off all of that natural oil, your skin just retaliates. It's just like, oh my gosh, I'm dry. I've lost all of my oil. Produce more oil. And then you think you have oily skin only to find out that your skin is actually dry, right? And it's just producing that oil to supplement what you have been washing and scrubbing off. So don't go in too hard. Don't be scrubbing too hard. All this active skin. This has happened to a friend of mine where she had acne and she just kept on thinking she has to just go in hard with these harsh products. And then one day she had a revolution to actually be gentle. And she started to stop using all the scrubs that she was using and just use a simple three-step process with a nice cream cleanser and her skin cleared up. I've had acne before and I sometimes have felt if I just scrub hard enough, ne, it will go away and then my skin will be smooth. But I was wrong. I was scrubbing off all the things that were working to try and fix my face. Your skin has a certain level of its own intelligence. And sometimes we're just doing too much, too much. And our skin just doesn't know what to do anymore. It produces too much oil because we're taking away all of its oil. So stop over washing and stop always scrubbing so hard. Do only what is necessary. If your exfoliator is only supposed to be used twice a week, use it only twice a week. Don't be scrubbing it all off. You're actually making your face worse. Number three is the complete opposite, which is not washing your face enough or properly. One of the reasons why I actually stopped washing my face in the shower is because 
I rush it in the shower. So I'm there, water, chua, the water's coming down and then I am there putting on the facial wash and then I wash it off like in 10, 15 seconds and then that's it. So there, lather, lather, I feel the bubbles, I feel the soap, it's soaping, it's soaping. If it has soaped, it must have worked, you wash it off. And that's not actually how it works. Your facial wash actually needs a little bit of time to do two things. First, it needs to activate. And the second thing is that it actually needs to provide your skin with things that it needs to provide it with. If it needs to get under whatever dirt that is in there to lift it up and lift it off, it needs time to do that. If it has any vitamin C or if it has anything that has to be provided onto your skin to cleanse it or maybe to feed it with anything that it might need to feed it with, it needs a little bit of time to do that. So you're looking at about 30 seconds plus to about a minute. So sometimes you have, so I have an exfoliator, which is actually a gel and how this gel works. And it's from um, Nimu. I'm using the Nimu range right now. And this, this range works so well for me and I really, really love it. So the exfoliator is actually a gel, right? It has enzymes in it and you put it on a dry face and you leave it for about two minutes. And then afterwards you wet your fingers and then you rub on your face and that actually activates it. Then you leave it on for another two minutes before you wash it off. You can actually do this with a, a nice gel cleanser that you may have as well. So before maybe you go into the shower, you can actually put it onto your dry face. When you get into the shower, make your hands wet and then activate the product and give yourself about a minute to really work in that product before you then wash it off. Like I said, minimum 30 seconds, but you want to average it about a minute or a little bit more depending on how your cleanser is. For me, this has really worked so amazing. I have found that my skin looks amazing. It loves it. And the products that I have been using actually work. Sometimes we buy something and we think to ourselves, ah, this thing doesn't work. But actually it does work. We're not using it right. So look at how long do you actually take to let the product, your cleanser, actually wash your face. And this is the other thing about makeup, is that we will have makeup on and then we'll head directly to washing our faces and that's not how makeup removal works. You need to use a specific makeup remover, make sure the makeup is all off and then you cleanse your face. That is the only time I double cleanse, where I wash my first facial wash and then I exfoliate afterwards because I want to make sure that my skin is extra clean after having the makeup on. But if you do not have makeup on, if you have just a normal day, you don't need to double cleanse all the time. So it's a balance between washing enough and also not washing too much. Number four, ooh, number four. Mm. <laughs> Popping pimples, ooh. Please do not pop your pimples. Oh, that is disgusting. I find it so disgusting. Guys, I've had juicy pimples. I've had the juiciest pimples of them all but I actually don't have the scarring from those juicy pimples. And I'll tell you why. When you have a pimple and you pop it, what actually happens is that there's this buildup underneath a layer of your skin, there's buildup that forms and then it causes this bump, right? And when you pop that pimple, you are forcing that buildup from underneath a certain layer of your skin to pierce through this other layer of skin and come out. So you are damaging your skin in two different ways and they are literally going to harm your skin for a long time. You're going to give yourself a dark mark, right? Because you have popped it in the wrong way. The second thing is you literally will leave holes in your face. Remember when I had acne, I started using a very harsh product which got rid of the pimples, but it left me with scarring, which I'm still dealing with today, three years later. Three, no, it's two years later since my acne has gone away. And I'm still dealing with the scars because that scrub made the pimples pop. And when they popped, they literally left holes on my skin. It's literally like little potholes on my skin. And that's what you're doing to your skin. Pimples will leave a little bit of scarring if you let them go away naturally. So the pimple will come up, it will do its thing, and your skin will deal with it and it will subside. And when it subsides, it will leave a light mark that could be gone in a month. Gone, pimple, gone, the scar, gone, 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 gone. It will take three days maybe for the pimple to come and go, but the scarring will last about three weeks, maybe four. But if you pop that pimple, just pssst, what will happen is that that scarring could take a year, maybe even more for you to get rid of that super dark mark. I've had scarring before. I've had acne before and I know this. If you're going to pop your pimple, see a professional. And if you're not a professional, don't pop your pimple. 
It's that simple. Just don't pop your pimple. Just don't do it. It's, oh. Please don't pop your pimple. And number five, thinking SPF is not for you. My people, my black brothers and sisters, SPF is also for us. There's some amazing brands which were created for Africans, by Africans, because we have this idea that our melanin skin don't need no SPF. Our skin needs SPF. It's not just the sun that we are protecting ourselves against. There's so many other lights. There's so many other UV type of lights that come against our skin that actually affect it from an aging, from a wrinkling point of view, from a hyperpigmentation point of view. So leaving dark marks on our skin from, a, from I mean, pollution is getting onto our face because we're not using SPF. Also thinking that we only need to use SPF when the sun is out, guys. Oh, please use SPF. Whether you're leaving the house or you're not leaving the house, use SPF, okay? So I've spoken about this SPF before. And the reason why I've spoken about it is because it's an amazing SPF. This is one by Nimu. Like I said, I'm using the Nimu range. And this Sunsi SPF 50 is one that I put on after my cream. So it's not enough to have SPF in your day cream. You actually need to use a separate SPF because it needs to be of a good quality. So usually in your day cream, it's not, it's not enough. So using an additional one protects you, right? The thing is it protects against UVB, infrared, blue light, which is from your phone, from your computer screen, from your TV screen. That's where blue light comes from and pollution. So that's what SPF actually protects you from. You're on your phone all day, you're on your computer all day, you're watching TV all day. There are different types of light damage that we are getting. So it's not just for the sun. So you are damaging your skin. You're causing yourself to age. You're causing yourself to get dark marks. Hyperpigmentation is happening because you're not using SPF. You may think that you don't need SPF, but I'm telling you now, you do. You get dark marks. You're aging yourself faster than you need to age. You think black don't crack. These days we're dealing with different air than our ancestors were. If you want to see black crack, just wait until you're old. Here's the thing about our skin. I've said to people before, and I've heard this, it's such, an, a, such a beautiful way to describe it, is that your skin tells a story. The closer you look and the older you get, the longer the story becomes. So all the things that we have been doing to our skin, all the way back, the way that we've been damaging it and harming it by scrubbing it too much, by harming it with the wrong products, by mismatching the type of products that we're supposed to use for our face, all that damage accumulates and it actually shows when you're older. So the wrinkles that you'll be getting when you're older, the damage that you'll be getting when you're older, it all comes from when you're young and you're dragging all those issues with you. It's like skin baggage. You don't use the right products for your skin. You're using oily products for your dry skin. You're using the wrong, you're not using SPF. You are over scrubbing and over exfoliating your skin. All of that is baggage and you keep packing and packing and packing and packing. And when you get older, that baggage comes to the pot. It comes and it's just like, I'm here to show you what I got. It unpacks itself on your skin. Skin care is self-love. And it is that time that is like, I'm, I'm dedicating time to myself. So you need to be gentle with yourself. Your skin will tell on you when you're older. Those scars, they will tell on you. They'll be like, plus you did this and you did this and then you did this. And then that other time, we did the soul. It will come to report back when you are older. And we don't want that. We really don't want that. We now have access to products that our parents didn't have. They had really harsh products. You know those ones, you know, when you used to look at our grandparents and our aunts and our uncles, they used to have these dark patches on their skin because the only thing that they had were things that burnt their skin. We have access to more things now, sister. We don't need to do that. And it's not about using expensive skin products. Oh, I feel like this list is too short. Right, because now I've spoken about these five mistakes, but I'm thinking about, oh my gosh, mismatching the products that you're using. This whole idea that you have to use expensive skincare to actually have good skin is a lie. It's just, you know, all the other things that we're doing wrong to our skin. How do we actually take off our makeup properly? Ooh, there's so many things, guys. Just from a cleansing point of view, oh, this list was too short. But if you just try these five things, don't over scrub, wash your face efficiently. Don't be too harsh on your face. Use an SPF and stop popping your pimples. 
you're already going to be very far very far with your skin that's all for today's video all about the five mistakes that you're making on your skin that you need to avoid doing right now these things are damaging your skin i hope that you enjoyed this one because i know i really did until the next time and the next time we speak about skincare on a saturday because we're self-caring on a saturday i'm kapano shimange and this is how i do things <laughs>